Whether you're looking to grow your side hustle into a full-time business or just create an extra stream of income for yourself, I'm gonna share seven marketing tips to help you take your side hustle to the next level. I'm Luke Sievers, helping entrepreneurs like you to reflect success in your brand and grow your business online. So if you wanna do the same, be sure and subscribe below for more tips. My first full-time business started out as a side hustle. And there are a lot of advantages to building a business as a side hustle that a lot of full-time entrepreneurs often don't have, time and money. As a side hustler, you still probably have your main job and the income that comes with it. That's money that you can invest little by little back into the business. You also probably have the luxury of time. And what I mean by this is that you're not under the gun trying to make this work by the end of the month or else you're gonna go out of business. You actually get to play the long game and take the time to build a lasting brand that will eventually supplement your income. So with that said, here are seven tips for successfully marketing your side hustle. Number one, start by creating your value ladder. Now this is a concept created by Russell Brunson and it's also referred to as building a funnel. But here's how it works. You have your products or services here. Let's say you have a basic product and you also have a premium product here for a little bit more money. Now in order to get anyone to actually pay for this product, let alone this one, you have to do one primary thing first and that's to get your customer to know, like, and trust you or your product first. It's a lot like dating. You would never propose on the first date, but why is that? It's because your date doesn't know, like, and trust you enough at that point to make such a big commitment. So what you're saying with the value ladder is that there are essentially other steps to get your customer to the point that they're ready to actually buy from you. I'm actually going to be working backwards in this process and I think you'll see why in a minute. So if we wanna to get to this point to actually propose to our girlfriend or boyfriend in this situation, we actually have to start dating them first and build a relationship with them over time. In business, we call this nurturing your leads, which is number two. So if we're going to be essentially dating our customer, we need to get to the point where we're actually communicating with them on an ongoing basis. One of the best methods for this is still through email marketing. And of course, there's other ways like SMS text messages, you get them on a list for that, or getting them subscribed to your YouTube channel. But in order to do this, we have to earn the right to be in constant communication with that person, much like you have to earn the right to be a boyfriend or a girlfriend to someone. So in order to earn this right, we need to create an offering that's much lower risk than this offering, and this is what we call a lead magnet. So a lead magnet is an almost free product. And the reason that I say almost free is because you want them to commit a little bit, but you still wanna make it relatively low risk for them. Following our analogy, you can think of this like the first date, where they're committing to spend one evening with you, but it's still a pretty minimal commitment at best. So what your customer is going to give in exchange for your lead magnet is an email address, a phone number, or even a small amount of money, like a shipping cost. With this, they've given you the right to start that ongoing communication with them. So your lead magnet itself should be something that your target customer would find valuable, as well as something that will take their trust with you to the next level. Again, this is the first date, so it's time to woo them. Ideas for lead magnets could be a short ebook, a video series, or a webinar that will educate them and also help to demonstrate your knowledge. It could be a free sample or a free trial that gives them a taste of the product. It could be a 30 minute consultation with you where again, you get to demonstrate your ability while simultaneously building rapport with them. So this becomes the second step of the value ladder. And the first step is content. This becomes the beginning of your marketing funnel and it's where your customer meets you for the first time. Before the first date, before the proposal, every relationship starts here. We're going to be putting out content on different platforms that attracts your target customer because it's adding value to them. These can come in the form of blog articles, videos, um, infographics, tweets, and you should really focus on either entertaining, informing, or educating. For your content strategy, you wanna follow the rule of thumb of giving 90% of the time and asking only 10%. No, I said come 90 and then I come 10. You don't go the whole 100. At this stage in the customer journey, you wanna be adding value way more than you're promoting yourself. But it is important that you're still promoting 10% of the time because this is where you actually get to promote your lead magnet. Now, it's time for a bonus tip. 
Since you're building your business as a side hustle, you may have some money set to the side that you want to invest into your business. So if you have the budget for it, you can expedite this entire process by running ads, whether it be Facebook ads, Google ads, or YouTube ads. And by the way, this is the place in your funnel where ads fit into your value ladder. And so tip number five, we need to choose the right content platform to focus on. So the type of content you create will largely depend on where your focus is or what platform you decide to focus on. Examples of content platforms include YouTube, your own blog, um, Facebook groups, Reddit, Instagram, just to name a few. As a rule of thumb, I generally recommend focusing on one or two platforms at the most, with at least one of them being a social media platform. This is because it's easy to spread yourself too thin and end up accomplishing nothing. Instead, you wanna focus on the one to two platforms that are going to be most impactful for your business. So how do you determine the two platforms to focus on. The main question you want to answer is, where is my target customer hanging out online? So determine which platform they're spending the most time on and invest in creating content on that platform. Now, in order to actually reach your target customer on that platform and build a community on there, the method for that will vary a little bit. But as a general rule of thumb for blogging and for YouTube, you wanna focus mostly on SEO to get found organically through search results. For most social networks like LinkedIn or Instagram, you wanna focus on something I call virtual networking. There's a method by Gary Vee known as the $80 strategy, which I think is a great place to start, and I'll include a resource below so you can learn more about that. Number six, create a brand strategy. Now this is where I get most excited because of course I am a brand designer and a brand strategist. Without having a brand strategy, your content and your marketing won't be nearly as effective. Now of course, we could talk about your logo design and your brand aesthetics. And while I do think these are important for your content, what I think you should focus on the most is your brand messaging. In your content, are you presenting a message that's actually resonating with your target customer? Is it clear? If you held in your hand the solution to all their problems, would they even know it based on the way you're communicating? For a great resource on this, I recommend checking out the book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Or again, you can reach out to me and I'd love to help you establish your brand strategy. Call me now. So now for my last point, we've talked a lot so far about your target customer, but if you haven't determined this already, you need to figure out who your customer avatar is and who is this ideal person who actually needs this service. Get as specific as you can because without having clarity here, you could be marketing a product or service that this person doesn't want or can't even afford. So figure out are they male, female, or both? What income do they need to be able to make to afford this? What's their age? What industry are they in? And going even deeper than this, and this is something that I also talk about within my brand strategy session, is what are your customer's deepest desires? What is it that motivates them? What is the internal problem Problem that they have that you actually help to solve. And so if you're looking for a starting place for marketing your side hustle, you really need to start here. Knowing your target customer will determine what your brand strategy is, as well as where you need to go to reach them. Your branding and the platform that you're on will also determine the type of content you create. Your content becomes the first step of the value ladder where you first get your audience's attention. Then you get the opportunity to present your lead magnet to them, which they get in exchange for their email address. This builds trust with them and also gives you permission to communicate with them on an ongoing basis through email marketing or what have you. And all throughout this process, you're nurturing that relationship and getting them to know, like, and trust you to the point where they're actually ready to buy from you and buy from you again and again. If you follow these steps, I guarantee that you'll grow your passion project into a full-blown business. But I know in a lot of ways, this video just scratches the surface. So you should check out one of these videos on the screen to go even deeper. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe to support the channel. And I'll catch you next time.